Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. It's great to have you joining us here today on the show. Really excited about our conversation with Blake Mazza. He is a kicker with Washington State, just finished his redshirt sophomore season from Plano, Texas. This kid had a dynamite 2019 year to the point where he was a finalist, one of the top three kickers in the country and a finalist for the Lou Groza Award for the nation's top kicker in college football. The first kicker ever in Washington State history to earn that distinction and become a finalist for the Lou Groza Award in 2019. He was an all Pac-12 first team selection and had a great season this year kicking, this past year kicking for Washington State. 20 of 21 on field goal attempts, 55 PATs and 115 points on the season for Blake Mazza, but even more than being a, a really good kicker, this guy loves the Lord. And when you go to his Twitter page, you see his Twitter handle at Blake Mazza, B L A K E Mazza, M A Z Z A. The very first thing you'll see is this it says, wholeheartedly pursuing Christ with the hashtag AO1, audience of one. Blake has a really good story. He's a PK, a preacher's kid, a pastor's kid, grew up in the church but has found a calling on his life since pretty much high school to pursue football and football basically being his ministry to share the gospel. Blake Maz has got a great story. Take a listen to it right here, right now on Sports Spectrum. Blake, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Dude, thank you so much, Jason, for having me. I'm uh, I'm pumped for this conversation. I've been uh, looking forward to it. I've been on my calendar for a couple weeks now. So yeah, very excited to talk to you, Blake. And you're the first guy to ever start a conversation by calling me dude, which makes me feel young. Number one, and, and number two, <laughs> Dude, this is it, this is going to be a good conversation. Let's just put it that this way. This will be dope. I'm I'm pumped for this. This is awesome. <laughs> I love it. Well, let's start right now. It's 2020. You just finished your your redshirt sophomore season. What a season it was. 115 points. 55. PATs, 20 for 21 on field goals, named a finalist for the Lou Gruza Award for the nation's top kicker. What was this season like for you, Blake? It, uh, to put it in kind of in words, it was crazy. It was something that I've worked for um, for years. Um, it's something my freshman year of high school I put down as a goal of mine was to be a, a Lou Groza finalist. And for people who don't, who don't know that award it's for the uh, top kicker in college football and I was a finalist for that along with a Georgia kicker and then the University of Iowa's kicker yeah. um, and it was fun it's playing for coach Mike Leach is uh is, it's crazy <laughs> it's interesting um, but at the end of the day he's a he's a good guy and he's fun and I love playing for him and it's uh it was a fun season it was something I'll definitely uh, remember for a long time so you go 20 for 21 on field goals, but I bet you just like any competitive athlete that I know of, the one is what sticks out, doesn't it? Yes, it, <laughs> that miss, it, it definitely had its little, little side game mental tricks with me of, all right, Blake, you literally just had one kick you could have made and you had been fine this off season, but going in this off season, it obviously will help me just know that I'm not perfect and I still have things to work on and improve on just because if you accomplish all your seasonal goals, then it's, it'd be actually tougher in my opinion to, uh, to work that extra, work that extra rep in the off season, do all the things you can to prepare. Um, so I can go into next season and, uh, work out this, this, these coming months and knowing that I still have things to improve on. So your Twitter page, Blake Mazza says wholeheartedly pursuing Christ. So on the field, yeah. you had a great season, but what about away from the field in 2019? Here we are now in 2020, living that motto out of wholeheartedly pursuing Christ. What did that look like for you this season? Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest things of that, of wholeheartedly pursuing Christ and having my identity in Christ is actually in the bio it'll be the first thing you read. And, and that's kind of my whole thing is like, I don't want to be known as the, as the kicker Blake Mazza, who is a Lou Gross, a finalist. I want the first thing people to see or think about me as someone who is a child of God, who is, who is a warrior for Christ and who shares the gospel 
um, every day. And that's something I prioritize this season. There's actually a tweet um, I'm, I tweeted out before the season. It's a screenshot, and it's my advice to other kickers and other athletes across the country. And it's, uh, and it's a, uh, in Scripture, it's a man with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. And um, that was my biggest thing this season and going into the season. I tweeted that out, and it kind of helped me throughout the season. Um, within football is I'm not seeking praise from fans. I'm not seeking praise from media. I'm not seeking praise and attention from coaches because of how well I'm doing, but I have a changed heart and I'm seeking praise from God. And that's me not just kicking field goals and getting three points every, every other drive or whatever it is, but just evangelizing and just continuing to strengthen my faith. And I think that's, uh, that's kind of what my wholeheartedly pursuing Christ means for me. Blake Maz is our guest here on Sports Spectrum from Washington State. He's their kicker. Just finished up his redshirt sophomore year, heading into next season now, which would be this year, I guess, in 2020. Let's talk about your faith and where that took shape for you. A lot of people we have on this podcast, the, the journeys that we've had, especially with athletes, they're all over the spectrum. They grew up as a Christian in a home, kind of fell away, came back. Some of them didn't become believers until later in life. Myself, I was 27 when I came to Christ uh, as a believer, what did that look like for you? Share your testimony, share your faith story with us. Yeah. I, so funny thing, I actually have grown up a preacher's kid. Okay. PK. Um, up, <laughs> yeah. PK all the way. I've grown up in a Christian household and my dad um, went to seminary in college. My mom was at that same university. It was a Christian university in Oklahoma. Um, they got married and had me about when they were, my mom was 21 and he was 23. They were married for about a year and a half or so and uh, grew up in the church um, my whole life, but never really knew my um, faith. It was always kind of my dad's faith, whatever he said, um, I believed, whatever he kind of, I was just in that little shadow of the church of having to be perfect, having to say the right words because of my dad's um, platform in the church and outside of the church. And um, throughout my high school years, um, my sophomore year, I was baptized on Easter and um, really started to uh, started to figure out what my faith was, not not anyone else's, um, but to really own it and uh, live it out. And that was something that I was uh, it was something that changed, changed my life. It's it's something that fills me up every day and it filled filled me up any more than anything. Um, and in high school, I was struggling with just filling up um, with sports and awards and stuff like that and trying to find my identity and find passion and, and something that, that would never satisfy me enough. And I was always seeking, um, seeking that little bit of extra until I found, uh, truly found my faith. And um, since then, I haven't, haven't stopped. And it's, uh, it's, it's living, just changing my life every day and changing my career. So. What is some of the daily disciplines that you've instilled? You're still so young, and I'm always impressed when I talk to college players because you got a lot of you're basically working two full time jobs when the season's going on, and then also going to school and doing the things that you're supposed to do as a good student. And then what I'll say is finding time for God, even though it's the most important thing. That's a struggle for a lot of college college athletes. What has that been like for you? making time for God in the spiritual disciplines that you've implemented into your life. Yeah, it is. Um, it's something that obviously is it's, it's time consuming, but it's also if you're being realistic, but it's something that I look forward to. And it's this past year, I've actually stepped into the role with another um, girl in my university of leading athlete ministry across uh, Washington state university nice. um, alongside uh, my church that I go to. And uh, me and her, um, we have, it's what we call a village. And we have just all athletes, guys and girls, we meet on Sunday mornings. And then we'll have our, um, we go to church later that night together. And alongside with that, I'll have this thing called a huddle. And it's alongside five other guys. And one of them is on staff at the church. And they just help. Um, just we, we go through life together. And it's really just um, just being there for each other, just growing together. And that's kind of what I do. Just accountability, I think, in college for guys and girls is is huge. Be just because of the distractions we have um, and the lives that we live as students, athletes, and students. Um, so that's kind of just my day to day routine. Um, it's something that I've really enjoyed, and it's uh, it's definitely helped me um, this past year and during season and all that. 
Blake Maz is our guest here on Sports Spectrum, Washington State kicker, just finished 2019, heading into 2020, finalist for the Lou Groza Award for the nation's top kicker, first kicker in Washington State history to be a finalist, Blake, so that must have been pretty cool. I know it's not about awards and things like that, but you set it as a goal to be oh, yeah. the first Washington State kicker. That's a pretty cool accomplishment. Yeah, it was something, like I said, it is something that I put in my journal um, my freshman year, you know, what's funny is I was actually uh, sitting down in Sunday service next to my uh, dad. He wasn't preaching that Sunday, <laughs> um, but I was sitting down bored in the sermon my freshman year. And I had a list of universities. It was right as I was starting to pick up recruiting um, for college. And I picked out five universities and five goals during the sermon. I know that's not great. I should have probably <laughs> been listening a little bit. Okay. I like the, the honesty, goals, though. <laughs> one of the goals was the Lou Groza Award I had written down. Um, and I, I pulled out that piece of paper and uh, had it on my bedside table um, in a little drawer for throughout my high school career. And, and uh, obviously, this past year, being a finalist for it. Um, was huge. It's something that's cool. It's humbling just to just be able to knock that, check that off. But obviously, I want to win it now. Um, Absolutely, so it's a, it's there's, a, there's still some things that I I still want to accomplish in the in the next coming two years of my college career. Absolutely. Now you're from Plano, Texas. You also mentioned Oklahoma is the home or where your your parents went to college. So walk us through going from the South to Washington State. And how that kind of goes through. I'm sure there's obviously recruiting involved in all that and kind of when you went through the process of choosing where to go to college. But yeah. that has to be a, a little bit of a culture shock, I guess. Maybe not going from oh. a place like Oklahoma and Texas all the way to the Northwest uh, Pacific Northwest. 100%. Yeah, coming out of high school, I actually committed to the University of Arkansas okay. under uh, Coach Brett Bielema. Um, played, uh, I was redshirted there my first – um, season. So August to December, I was there my first couple months of college. I was on the team and redshirted. And uh, the plan for me was to, from Coach Bielamos, to be the future kicker. Well, uh, funny how God works. Um, that staff was released in December and they brought in a new staff with a new plan. And uh, so I just, I talked to my family and was like, I'm not sure I've uh, enjoyed the university enough to stay around and stick it through. Yeah. So decided to transfer. And this is all before the transfer portal <laughs> existed. Right. Um, so I reached back out to Washington State, who was in touch with me in high school and um, got connected. I asked them if they were still interested and and they were. And their kicker at the time was uh, leaving. Um, he was graduating and uh, going to go to go to the NFL and stuff like that. So. Went up there, uh, bet on myself, and kind of um, really was hit by the weather. I tell you what, it <laughs> snowed more than I've ever seen. And just a little boy from Texas, I had no boots. I had nothing. <laughs> and a couple of uh, black ice layouts on through a campus realized that, all right, Blake, you are no longer in Plano, Texas. You should probably buy some warm boots and a winter coat. <laughs> that's funny so that's uh that's kind of the transition it was funny it's uh but i've really loved it it's it's been good for me just to get out of the texas south area and just experience different parts of the country and um different parts of the different parts of the united states because it's also um faith-wise up in the northwest there's not a there's not a whole lot of christian churches or just any christianity being spread in the gospel up there um, it's not like the Bible, Bible belt down here. So it's a little bit different, which was something that I did not know about till I got up there. Mm. And it's, uh, it's been awesome. I've loved it. I've loved it in every way from the campus to the, to the students, to my church, to the team. It's, I've, I've enjoyed Washington state. So has that been a challenge from a faith perspective though, to, you know, it, it's different in this. I've been to the South. I'm from the, I'm from upstate New York. So that's a whole nother yep. area in the Northeast, but I've been to the South and it's just a different atmosphere when it comes to your faith. Yep. And I wonder for you, what was that a difficult transition going up to Washington state and trying to find your place, not only as a kicker and as a football player and even as a student, but as a, as a man of faith. Yeah. Yeah. I think when I first told my parents and they first got to the, uh, found out about Washington State and how I was talking to them. Um, they said, "You all right? You know, there may not be a church on every corner." Um, yeah. And the biggest fear was like, "All right, am I going to find people who are going to help lead me and hold me accountable, and I'm going to be able to be in a position to lead others?" 
And um, it was the first Sunday I found the church. Um, it was on campus. Um, one of the guys who uh, worked in the equipment room um, on the team uh, came up to me, sat down, did not know me. I did not know him. He, uh, he sat down next to me and ended up meeting each other. And we figured out, all right, I'm a, I'm a player and he's an equipment guy. We did not know that. And I, I laughed to this day because God, I know for a fact God put him in that seat next to me. And uh, he was actually on staff with the church. And he also worked within football. And I was an incoming player looking for someone to help lead me in my faith. And he was a junior at the time. And I was a freshman going in my second semester of college. Hmm. And uh, at that time, he was leading athlete ministry. And, um, and now the torch was passed this uh, past about a year ago. And uh, now I'm doing it. And it's, uh, it's crazy just how God works and um, just the ways that you go up to a place thinking that your faith and uh, finding a tr- church and a healthy church for me would maybe be an issue. And um, before you know it, I'm more involved in a church and athlete ministry at WSU um, than I ever thought I would be. And it's it's beautiful and it's so cool to see um, athlete ministry thrive. And it's crazy to see this, uh, just the way that God has put my church up in the Northwest and allowed me to um, infiltrate that area of, um, of faith in the Northwest and stuff like that. So it's been awesome. Um, but definitely a worry back to your question. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, definitely something I was worried about. Blake, how do you live out that faith? You know, you're very public, you know, when you put wholeheartedly pursuing Christ on your Twitter page, that lets people know that's the very first thing that is important to Blake Mazza, not football, not school or anything else it's it's pursuing christ wholeheartedly so with that comes backlash and i'm not saying you've experienced backlash uh you will at some point because the bible says we all will but how do you kind of manage that and work through that in still being able to go to class to and you have a little bit of a platform right so if you kick a a field goal a 50-yard field goal and people come up to you and it creates this platform for you to be able to talk about your faith, but you don't want to alienate people and you certainly don't want to alienate your teammates because you're there for a common goal. How do you kind of work through all of that? That's actually a really good question. I think the biggest thing for me um, is being myself and being true to myself. And when I do that, I will um, kind of follow my faith and kind of um, be a light um, to others. But I think like you were saying a couple weeks ago, I was down in Atlanta, Georgia, for the ESPN college football award show um, with Luke Rosa. And uh, I started to really be wrecked by the fact that I was uh, some of the interviews and questions I was being asked that I felt like I was, I was having to just give them what they wanted to hear and not, not an answer that I uh, really was passionate about sharing and um, really wanted to share. And I think that's a big struggle for athletes nowadays and big, something a big struggle for me personally is uh, just being true to myself. And I think what you're saying just about the question is how do I do that is what what I was saying is being true to myself and not just trying to put on a facade of um, being a kicker who who's just doing great on the field. And that's it. That's all people see. But it is that whole part wholeheartedly pursuing Christ. Like I said, um, that's the first thing in my bio. And that's not just because I want it. I, that was the first thing I thought of. But it's because I want that to be the first thing people see. I want that to be the center of my life. I want that to be the first thing in my life that I reach to, that people see, and just firmly found is my foundation of my life. And I think once that is founded, my career then follows in, in place. And that's just kind of how I want to live life and how I've lived life this past uh, these past two years of college. So you mentioned the college football awards. That's got to be a cool experience. What was the what was the the one takeaway from going to a place like that and being at an event like that? Yeah, it was uh, just going around the room. You're seeing Jalen Hurts. You're seeing um, these running backs. You're seeing um, all the Ohio State guys, Chase Young, whatever it is. These guys are big names in college football and hold a huge hold a huge platform and uh, obviously a little bit bigger than me, I would say. <laughs> so, uh, But these guys are going in the next couple of months. They're about to go to the NFL draft and um, sign some huge financial deals. And it, it was just humbling to be around them and just – um, just to, I was just sitting at a dinner, um, before we did media and stuff. And I looked around the room and was just seeing these guys and just, uh, it was just humbling to even be in the presence of, 
um, just that room, just seeing the ESPN um, logo around, yeah. it's it's awesome, and it just really hit me hard. I was like, dang, this is this is like you pretty much hit the top of the top with awards, and it's like it's like what Tom Brady said um, after a couple Super Bowls ago. He uh, in an interview he said, um, "There's got to be more." And, uh, yeah. I kind of sat there and I was like, yeah, I'm a finalist now for the top kicker in college football. Like there's nothing else you can do besides win it, but there's gotta be more. And it, uh, it really hit me. It was an awesome experience though. So, I'm um, in Atlanta just with all those guys. It was, uh, it was super cool. It was super cool to do. And, uh, be- so I presume when you made that, that list of goals sitting in that, you know, chair, ignoring the pastor's sermon, did the <laughs> yeah. three letters NFL come up in, in, in some of those goals too? Yeah, it's obviously the <laughs> final fifth goal of the of the list, but yeah. it's, uh, I mean, people have asked me about that and it's uh, obviously something that I have. Personally, I try not focus on. Um, my biggest thing is just kind of just going day to day, just really just because if you, if you, when you're kicking, like if I'm kicking and I think about like, all right, I've got to make five more kicks. I will 100% miss that kick that I'm currently kicking Sure. because I'm looking down the road. And that's just kind of how I'm approaching, um, kind of how I'm approaching my career too, is if, if, if God willing, I have a 10 year career, I have a one preseason game career or I have no career at all. It's, it's, it's something that you've got to live with. And, it's obviously if that was the if football was the foundation of my life and the center of my life and the number one thing in my life, then that would be a huge, huge gut wrench because uh, obviously someday you're gonna hang the cleats up and it's how what, what's your identity once you hang the cleats up? What's your life once you hang the cleats up? And uh, that's that's kind of how I've lived my life and career. So um, yeah, it's 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 been crazy and uh, it would be an awesome it would be awesome to play in the NFL. I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with having a goal to reach the NFL without keeping, you know, your identity focused on football. I think you you want to dream big because what I say, Blake is listen, if you get to the NFL, your platform only increases for you to be able to talk about Christ, right? 100%. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Blake Maz is our guest here on sports spectrum. Last couple of questions here, Blake. So you refer, you referenced Proverbs 16, nine in a recent tweet about the excitement for 2020, uh, not just on the field, but even more away from it. So why reference that scripture as you uh, start to think about your hopes, your goals for 2020? Yeah, it's something that I was uh, just really praying about on January 1st and thinking about just also writing down my goals and uh, figuring out what I wanted to do this upcoming off season and then in this season, upcoming 2020 season, and just, uh, just really realize that um, I'm going to figure out my goals, but God's going to guide me and in, in that and where I want to go and what I want to do. And he's going to lead me um, into all these different if, different aspects of life. And it's it's whether that's on the field or in the classroom or in the church. It's it's something that uh, I believe is is something that we should all live by and realize consistently is um, we can only also do so much. It's like we the biggest thing is a struggle of us is just being humans and um, being sinners is just, we constantly try and, um, try and lead our life and realize that I can do this alone. And it's like, you can't. <laughs> and, and that's something I wanted to tweet out. Um, just something that hit me hard as I realized my goals and, uh, for the 2020 season and 2020 off season. So. Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having goals and, and dreaming and putting together plans in place. All right. As we close here, Blake, what is the what is the Lord teaching you right now? This is a question we ask all of our guests here on Sports Spectrum. What are you learning from God right now where he has you in the season of life you're in? Yeah, I think for me right now, the biggest thing that um, this off, this past season um, that I've gotten um, was the, the fact that um, there's more to life than football for me. Um, there's more to um, there's more to, there's, there's more to life than in that. And it's this past season and this past year, um, I talked with a bunch of people who were leading me, um, some of the guys in my church and, um, really was having a call for ministry, um, after football, whenever football ends. And, and in the midst of that, I realized that, um, there's not a decision of ministry or football, a career. It's, they can be both. Absolutely. They can be the same thing. I can do my ministry within the within the locker room. I can do the ministry on the field within interviews and stuff. And that's something that I'm slowly learning 
and slowly still trying to take a grasp of because I've grown up. My dad was a preacher and um, and he was in a church and stuff like that. And for the longest time, I felt like, dang, I'm going to have to pick either or. I have a calling in ministry, um, but I also have I have this talent on the football field. It's like, dang, I'm going to have to pick. And it, and it hit me towards the end of the year talking to guys who are like, no, but like, you don't have to. Yeah. I was like, you're, you know what? You're right. And, and you said this earlier, like, I, I don't have to just pick. And um, I think that's for everyone's life is you don't have to just be in a role in a church um, to share the gospel. You don't have to be be a higher end preacher in the country just to have an influence in social media and in media itself. It's it's within our day to day lives, whether you're in an office building, whether you're wearing cleats on Saturdays or Sundays and and everything in between. So that's that's kind of what I've gotten. I'm from God these these past couple months and something and I'm still going to try and take a grasp of and and still obviously still struggle with it but uh that's definitely something that I've uh I've had to realize. Blake Mazza, thank you buddy. This has been great. Thanks for being on the show and uh we'll be watching 2020 and 2021 and beyond and uh I know God's got great plans for you. Thanks for joining us here on the show. Yeah, man, thank you so much. Great stuff there from Blake Mazza, the Washington State kicker, one of the top three kickers in the country, a Lou Gruza Award finalist for the nation's top kicker in college football. 2019 All-Pac-12 first team member, finished 20 for 21 on field goal attempts in 2020. Thanks to Blake. He's got a great story. Make sure you hit him up on Twitter and let him know that you heard his story. He's at Blake Mazza. Let him know that you heard this podcast. I love what his Twitter handle says, wholeheartedly pursuing Christ. Hashtag AO1, audience of one. He is Blake Mazza. We appreciate Blake for being here on Sports Spectrum. We appreciate you for listening as well. Want to encourage you to check out our website, sportspectrum.com. That's where all of our content can be found. We're talking about daily devotionals every day at 6 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. Couple minute read to get your day started right with God. Articles all day long. Athletes talking about their faith, talking about why Jesus is the most important thing in their life. And then you have tons of archival content, including our Sports Spectrum podcast with over 400 plus interviews to go back and listen to. All of our content can be found at sportspectrum.com. Also hit us up on our social media pages, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Great way to stay connected to all that we're doing throughout the day and night. And you can DM us or hit us up, reply, like, whatever it is, share, We'll see it. We'll be, we would love to just interact with you on social media at sports underscore spectrum on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time here on Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. Have a great rest of your day.